Hi, I'm Lisa Lerone and welcome back to The Conservation Starter. So I've previously covered a lot of different social media channels and how you can consume and create conservation content. So now I want to talk to you about Instagram and conservation content on Instagram is just, I can't say enough about it because what we do is so visual. What we work on is so beautiful. The things we do is so incredible to watch. Instagram is a way to share what we do. So I just think it's an incredible uh, platform to do that. The thing about Instagram is it's instant. You're meant to take photo and share it right then and there. That was the whole premise of why Instagram was created. When you're on a web page, it won't let you create a post, create content. So the idea is you create it on your phone, you share it on your phone. I've mentioned in my other video how I capture content, but pretty much it's mostly always been on my phone and my phone has gotten better over time, but ultimately I've had some pretty shoddy phones in the past and that's fine. A lot of people choose to create content though on better equipment and conservation labs and conservatives often do have professional equipment to capture their content and then they just share it back to their phone to post. But I flip it around and instead I do my written content on my computer and type it up really quickly and then send it to myself and copy and paste it there. I find I have a high chance of having spelling mistakes when I do it just on my phone. So instead I prefer to do it in something that has a spell checker and it means if I've already used hashtags before as well, I can copy paste, send them to myself, 20 hashtags all in one go. So that's just something that I choose to do because what's in the description does matter. Spelling, grammar does matter because I'm using Instagram as a professional thing. Like I do want to make sure I'm using it in a professional way. In terms of Instagram, I think it's really important to know how the channel works and the idiosyncrasies of it. So ultimately you are sharing a uh, photo or a video and then you have a, a description that goes along with it they allow you to have incredibly long descriptions up to 2200 characters which is long so i'd recommend being a bit strategic and maybe being concise some people don't bother with descriptions at all and that's okay but i do like putting in a bit of context with mine also it allows you to use hashtags so hashtags are so important across multiple social media channels because it means that your content is searchable and it also means that it's aggregated with other content that's got the same hashtag you can have up to 30 hashtags but that's across both the description and the comments I don't always try and use 30 but I try and get close to that I try and use at least 20 so in terms of how I use hashtags I try and have some that I always use like paper conservation and book conservation and I try and put only two or three really key ones with my description I do not want 30 hashtags clogging up my description it looks messy and that's just a personal choice I made I know some people do and that's fine so what I do is I post with two to three hashtags in my description and then I will immediately pretty much right away comment and in that comment I'll have my remain, remaining hashtags that I want to use. That's just a system I came up with quite a long time ago and it works for me so that's what I kept using but I strongly recommend you you work out what works for you and the great thing with Instagram is you don't just follow accounts you can actually follow hashtags so if you'll see I'm following paper conservation I think this is fantastic I don't think there's any other social media that you can do this but I love it because it means that posts that take with paper conservation appear in my feed. Some other hashtags I follow are book conservation and art conservation and things similar to that. It's also a great way to find new people to follow. One hashtag that I find quite interesting is conservation. It's got over 3 million posts and the reason why it's environmental conservation. So this is where I want to talk to you about keyword research. You can very strategically choose what hashtags you use with your post and that helps your searchability and I fully believe you should research <laughs> which hashtags to use and you can spend as little or as much time on this as you want. One way to do keyword research is to the accounts you're following creating content similar to yours see what hashtags they use and create a little bank of those hashtags that you like to use and you want to keep using. Then you can make a choice so for example conservation is a very strong hashtag it's got over 3 million posts so it's quite popular so it means there's a quite probably quite high chance that people are following that hashtag but if you scroll through it's mainly environmental conservation so do you want an image of historical paper to show up amongst you know animal conservation environmental conservation it actually gives me a bit of a giggle when I think about it this they're, they're searching for environmental conservation and then they're seeing con like our conservation. It's actually quite good because I guess you are exposing it to a whole new audience but you do have to make that choice quite strategically. So sometimes I'll use that hashtag, sometimes I won't. Also I won't always use conservation specific hashtags. There are a lot out there and I recommend looking them up. If it's a book or paper I will use a book specific hashtag. For example there's a book lovers hashtag that has over 3 million posts and the thing is if I'm doing a book conservation treatment 
yes it probably appeals more to conservators but also anyone that's interested in books might want to see that if they like looking at books in their feed they might like to look at a beautiful historical book too so it just increases your exposure so ooh, yeah some people really need to learn to use the hashtags well and accurately um i just don't understand some of this content that's been put on under some hashtags that was a bad example let me try another one books of instagram and so there's over four million posts for this oh my goodness books okay people have used this hashtag well. So there's lots of books on this. So if they are enjoying consuming book content and book covers, there's no reason why they wouldn't like to look at historical books, right? Yeah. So what I just wanna say is be really careful about the hashtags you use, use them strategically. I would recommend using some of them because otherwise, unless they follow you, there's no way that people are gonna find your content. In Instagram, the way you can personalize it is your profile picture, your short description about yourself and your name, and also one link. So make sure it's a good one. Something to know about in the descriptions of Instagram is you cannot include clickable links to things. You can say refer to my bio where there's a clickable link. So I say make sure it's a good link, make sure it's a really key one that you want people to click on, but also regularly check that that link is working because you don't want one link, your one link, your one chance to get people to go to the other content of yours to be dead. Something else I do want to say is the social media channels often change. It used to only allow one-to-one -one ratio photos. And if you hadn't taken a photo that was in a one-to-one -one ratio, you were cutting off content. Now it does allow you to have different format photos. So if I go through my feed, I'll show you. So not everyone's doing a one-to-one -one ratio, but a lot of people are. And it's just because that um, is what shows up best on the feed. So it's really good to know those sorts of conventions and try and make sure you're matching to the best possible ratio. So in terms of videos, often Often when we shoot videos they're not in a one-to-one -one ratio so I learned how to edit them so I have a one-to-one -one ratio and that's quite important it means that you can center where your content is I've seriously learned some things over time so it's all right you keep learning stay abreast of the changes of social media because they will change and there's different ways that you can utilize it not just conservatives are going to consume this as if you've got a public account anyone can including the general public so I'd recommend not using too much jargon making it in an easy language and also thinking quite carefully about what sort of content you're sharing in my previous video I do talk about what content you should share and maybe shouldn't share so I definitely recommend checking that out to just have a bit of a think about sort of the copyright you have permission to share it is it sensitive material and also do we as conservatives really want to share that kind of content I have my conservation account which is purely conservation then I also have a personal account and I've set this to private Instagram like a few other social media channels actually strongly doesn't encourage you to have multiple accounts but it makes it very easy for you to switch between the two so uh, there's really incredible channels out there I'm not gonna go show you the examples if you want to know the content that I think is really great I recommend checking out who I follow on Instagram and I do regularly try and find new people to follow so I think that's everything that I want to say about Instagram I'm just getting distracted by all the really cool stuff I'm sorry I'm getting distracted um I'm gonna talk to you next time and excuse me while I go get distracted by more Instagram posts so join me for the next video, which will be in two weeks time. So to never miss a video, make sure you subscribe. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below.